An earthquake rattled New York City yesterday as the city and the surrounding area was hit by one of the largest quakes on the East Coast in the past century. Now, why do we feel quakes farther away from the epicenter than in other parts of the country like the West Coast? And how would our building stand up to a bigger earthquake? As it turns out, our Audrey Puente addressed those exact questions with a seismologist a few years ago and joins us now with more. Hey, Audrey. Hi, Arthur. Yes, those were questions that I actually wanted to find answers to. So I did a little of homework of my own and investigated earthquakes here in New York City. We actually have a history here, right here in Manhattan, as six fault lines run through Manhattan Island. In fact, one of them is known as the East River Fault because it runs along the west side of Central Park and kind of turns at 32nd Street right into the East River. So I went out and spoke with a Caltech seismologist about all of this. Describe to us if and what is the difference between earthquakes in the East Coast versus the West Coast. So the earth moves and produces energy, but it then travels through the earth, just like when you ring a bell, there's vibrations going through the bell, these vibrations go through the earth. And a broken bell does a much worse job of ringing than a solid bell. And essentially the East Coast rocks are like the solid bell that are very hard and cold and intact, and they do a lovely job of ringing. So an earthquake is felt over a very wide area. So then with that being said, would, would one think that there would be more possible damage in the Northeast than on the West Coast? Well, yes. So you, you'd get damage over a wider area for the largest earthquakes. You know, if you're right on top of it, you haven't had time for the waves to, to die out and you get a lot of damage right on top. But then you continue to get it over a, a wider area. Um, but also there's another factor that plays into the amount of damage, and that's building codes. You know, building codes really do work. Here in California, we have very strict limits on how you build a building. But because earthquakes are, are rarer on the East Coast, your building code doesn't require the same levels of strength that ours do. You know, in New York City, we have so many tall buildings, much more so than in areas of, on the West Coast. Would it, what is it that we should be really, I don't know, concerned about? Your tallest buildings have been really engineered to resist wind, wind speeds, right? And that's pretty much the same criteria. So I think you should be more concerned about your older mid-rise buildings, the sort of five to 10 story level. Those probably haven't been engineered for winds and therefore will be more susceptible to what happens in the earthquakes. The fact that earthquakes cannot be predicted is a large part of what makes them so frightening. We are much more afraid of something when we don't know when it's coming. If we, if we know it's coming, we can prepare. Oh, really interesting that mm -hmm. the super talls isn't really what she's worried about. Right, it's the smaller structures, like you said, the five to 10 story buildings. And of course, the one, the earthquakes that we experienced yesterday here in the tri-state area ran across the Ramapo line, uh, Ramapo fault line rather. So of course, those structures, mostly homes and lower uh, low rise buildings were definitely more susceptible to damage. So it's something we'll be, of course, studying now with all this new data that we experienced uh, throughout the region yesterday. All right, let's talk about today though. Temperatures were pretty cool across the region, below average. We're mostly in the low 50s. Normally we should be in the upper 50s. Right now we're sitting at 52 degrees in Central Park. It's 50 in Islip, 50 in Bridgeport, 48 up towards Poughkeepsie. A look at the 24 hour temperature change. We're running a little bit milder than they were at this than we were at this time yesterday, but the winds have picked up in speed and that's definitely adding to the chill factor today. Right now they're sustained between 10 and 20 miles per hour, but the gusts are as high as 33 over towards Newark and tomorrow we are expecting wind gusts to be up to about 25 miles per hour, so it'll be another windy day tomorrow. Right now across the Northeast we have temperature readings in the 40s across the northern tier of the state and right into New England. It's 53 over towards Buffalo. Now there is still an area of low pressure that's kind of spinning just off towards our northeast here and sort of pinwheeling in some shower activity across the east end of Long Island. And we're also getting a couple of spotty showers across parts of the Hudson Valley and into the Poconos. I'm going to leave in the threat for a couple of isolated showers in the next few hours, but overnight we should dry things out and also clear out some of the cloud cover too. Here's our dry slot that's going to be pushing into the region for tomorrow and we're expecting plenty of sunshine. There's also another system that's brewing out towards our west here. This area of low pressure will work its way eastward, and this will bring us our next chance of maybe a couple of spotty showers as we go into Monday uh, across the tri-state area. In the meantime, for tonight, we are expecting uh, temperatures to take a little bit of a tumble. There is a warm surge of air that's coming across the midsection of the nation. We're going to tap into some of that, though, by the middle part of next week. So look at the future cast. Shows that we have that cloud cover kind of breaking apart overnight.
tonight and tomorrow we'll wake up with a mix of sun and clouds. We'll see lots of sunshine during the middle part of the day and we'll have a couple of high clouds filtering in, in the latter part. And it looks like tomorrow will be mostly clear, at least tomorrow night, excuse me. And then as we go into Monday morning, we'll have plenty of sunshine to start out the week. Temperatures also start to respond nicely with all that sun. We're going to have highs moving into the 60s and then eventually into the 70s as we go into next week. Clouds will start to roll in here from that system I just pointed out to the west, but you can see not a lot of moisture associated with it. We'll just squeeze out maybe an isolated shower for Monday. So for tonight, the lows will be pretty chilly in some areas. We'll be in the low 30s up in the Hudson Valley. 30 degrees in Monticello will be just under 40 here in the city. Then tomorrow we're looking for highs mostly in the 50s once again. Mid 50s for Central Park. Still a little bit below average for this time of year, but we'll see plenty of sunshine and it'll feel good on the sunny side of the street. Check out Monday 63 for the high temperature. We have the total eclipse happening also at about roughly around 325 and we'll have clear skies for that. Spring feel like uh, or spring like the temperatures and Tuesday with a high of about 71 degrees. So we have a shower chance on Wednesday. More steady rainfall likely for Thursday and light rain likely Friday with a drier weather pattern coming in for next weekend.